I'm Lindsay. I did it, I did it. Oh my god. And as someone who spent seven years living in a 175 square foot micro studio, I'm no stranger to small spaces. But van life takes it to a whole new level. After one hell of a false start, I finally bought this van, a 2013 Chevy Express. And now it's finally time to get to work. So follow me as I build out my van with the hopes of eventually achieving my goal of visiting every national park here in the United States. Today is a terrifying day that I've been anxious about for a while, but I'm hoping that with my dad's help, I can manage to successfully cut a hole in the roof of the van and then install the ventilation fan. So I'm pretty sure that after this, I no longer have to do any sort of like demolition to the van. Um, never feels good to feel like you're destroying this thing that you paid a lot of money for. Um, so hopefully after this, I'll feel a lot less anxious, but for now I have power tools. I am losing my mind and I'm gonna go get this done today. A few weeks ago, I ordered this Max Air ventilation fan, and after way too long, it is finally time to install it. Now I guess I just gotta measure the roof and shit, decide where it's gonna go. Okay, my dad convinced me. Uh, I've done all the measurements that I think we need, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole up there. I'm putting the template up one last time. Even if it's ceremonial, I'm gonna measure five times. Okay. You see daylight? Yes, like the tiniest. All right, glasses, thing. please. Okay, oh, sorry. Sounds awful. feel about that. Does it fit? Hold on. It's yes. Wow. I love it. So I don't I don't Can you comment on the experience of actually cutting this hole? I hate having a hole. I hate the hole. I hate the hole so much. But I this makes me hate the hole a little bit less. That's all. So now I just have to file this down. Um prime it, and then I can actually install the fan, which I actually don't think I'll do today. I'm running out of time, and I can do it tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain, and I'm just going to drive home with a new sunroof. 
so yeah. I'm just gonna do one last step today, and that is put on this metal primer around the edges. Oh my God, there's a bug on my lens. <sighs> okay. Well, I've gotta put this metal primer around the edges um, so that rust um, can't start uh, to form and eat away at the newly cut hole. So I'm just gonna spray that on and then clean up a lot of metal shavings inside of the van. <laughs> Okay then, the final product. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> okay, there's a hole here. Okay, um, fan day two. Let's get this done. <laughs> Okay, now that that's done, it's time to move on to butyl tape, which will seal all the edges around um, before the fan fitting actually is placed in. Um, and not only does it make a seal, but I'm also gonna kind of double up in some places to sort of build up um, the divots where the ribs go down and it leaves a bit of a gap. So, um, just gonna start cutting and slapping this on really. Okay, I think this is it. Butyl tape on. I have this frame, I'm gonna throw it in now. I don't see many people do this, um, but essentially I'm sticking this wooden frame to the ceiling of the van so that when I go on top and drill holes through the metal roof, um, the fan itself has something to screw into and grab onto instead of just punching through the thin sheet metal and like hanging down. It's in, ah, like even if I can't seal anything today, which I definitely will, I can put the fan in and not have a hole in here. <laughs> It's done, it's real, it actually exists. It's in my roof. I cut a hole in my roof and I filled the hole in my roof. I can't believe it. Wow, I'm so glad this is over, honestly. <laughs> Technically, it isn't totally installed because the fan itself will be wired up later and then once the ceiling is finished, I can add the cosmetic fitting that comes with the fan to give it a nice finished look on the inside. But for now, I think even just the wooden frame looks so good and I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out. Finally, there it is. That is the vinyl sheet flooring that I have been waiting weeks for. Um, and as much as this was a pain in the ass, it is still very exciting because uh, like this was sort of the first thing that I got to make a decision about 
that would actually affect how the van interior would look. Um, so I'm pretty excited to like unwrap this and see what it like really looks like in person. Um, but I won't actually find out if I made the right decision until I open it up to install. Wow. So this is my first look at the floor color. Um, I am a fan. I really like it and I um, think I made the right choice. So can't wait to see how it actually looks once it's installed. to wait eight hours for the foam to fully cure, but at least now I get to use the multi-tool. see that in these little corners behind the wheel wells um, there's just bare plywood. Um, this second bit that I cut uh, I, I was like several inches short just because the roll ran out so I think I'm actually gonna try to use some of these like off cuts of the vinyl sheeting to just fill that in. It'll it'll go under the bed anyways like no one's gonna notice. It's fine. I was like worried, I hope I got the right adhesive. This stuff is incredibly sticky. Uh, even if it's not the right adhesive, I think it's gonna get the job done. <laughs> This isn't going well, but I feel like that's pretty obvious. I'm gonna roll out as much as I can. I have to stop shooting because my hands are like toddler hands times a thousand. They're so sticky, just everything they touch. Um, I'm gonna try to roll this out. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, well, I rolled out as much as I possibly could and let it cure, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what it looks like now. Well, 
looks pretty good, except for all of the adhesive that I got everywhere because I was a mess and wrestling with the um, vinyl. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that up. Okay, so the floor is relatively clean. Um, it's not perfect, but at least it no longer feels like a movie theater floor. Um, a lot of like gaps and some overlaps and some messy lines going on, but I kind of just keep repeating the mantra to myself that most of it will just eventually be covered up anyways. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and seal all around the edges and I guess in any sort of weird gaps. Um, with some silicone so that water can't get in under the edges. Okay, so now that the silicone is done, I'm gonna install this like transition strip so that the floor mat up front in the cab of the van uh, kind of has like a smooth little strip across it to transition to the laminate. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit funky with this because I need to put some more height in between this and the actual van floor so I don't nail right into the metal. So I'm gonna have to figure something out that's a little bit stupid. Okay, so I cut a one by two to just about the length here. So the mat's just gonna sit on top right here and then that should give me enough to drive into to add the finishing strip but I think I'm gonna have to like, I think I should glue this down first, which is unfortunate because I have really come to dislike glue or adhesive of any kind. Okay, wait, I lied. That wood is actually too thick. Um, the mat was thicker than I thought, so I'm actually just gonna go with quarter inch ply, which is what I had all along, so great. Um, Well, that is good enough for me. Um, I'm gonna call that done, but I can't really take any total satisfaction in the floor being finished yet because I still have to build the stairs. So I roughly cut these two boards to be the size of the stairwell here. Um, I still have to kind of jigsaw out a uh, little notches for the actual um, latches that the door locks go on to. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I think this is actually going to work somehow. Um, I don't know. I feel like this is the mo this is the most winging it part of the van I've done so far, um, which I might regret. So... <laughs> actually kind of shocked that I did this uh, just because I felt like the curves were going to be such a hard thing to figure out but now that I know that it fits I guess I'm gonna go ahead and stain all of the wood pieces um, I'll give them a coat of urethane after that to seal out the water and then I can actually install them I guess there's any pigment in this wood stain. The color is like natural. Um, to be honest, the color that I really wanted was out of stock. Um, so I might just have to go and hunt that down instead of this because I don't think it's gonna get darker no matter how many coats I put on because it is just oil, so fuck. <laughs> okay, well, let's try that again. Already, I think this is looking much more promising. It's just a lot darker than the other stuff, so let's see what it looks like.
All right, well, this is uh, how they came out. It's not bad. I definitely like overstained this one or like let it build up too much, but I'm not gonna go crazy over it because staining was not gonna be exact anyways, but I did tear out a little piece of vinyl to compare the color and it's good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal these and then figure out how to actually put it back into the into the van. I think that probably does it for the stairs. Um, they're definitely not the most beautiful thing in the world. I certainly had to do a lot of little weird things to get it to properly fit um, and feel stable, but it's good enough for now. I think it looks pretty decent. And um, yeah, with the floors and the stairs and the fan all in here, it feels really weird. Um, I think before it just kind of felt like I was fucking up this van. Um, and it still feels like I'm fucking up this van, honestly. But at least now I can kind of picture it fully built out and ready to go somewhere fun with it. And speaking of taking the van somewhere fun, as much as I feel like I should be spending every free moment I have on the build, I figured I should at least take advantage of what's left of the summer. So this weekend, I'm driving out to Western Mass to go tubing with my friends. So yeah, I dropped my phone in the river and after maybe only three minutes of desperately diving for it, failing miserably, not even getting close, someone behind us asked, hey, did someone say they lost a phone? So next thing I knew, this absolute legend put on a pair of goggles, said he'd been taking diving classes, and he just disappeared under the water. Is this it? Well, 
I am a little damp and kind of dirty, but that was so worth it. Everything about the tubing trip was so worth it. But on my way home, the van started to have some problems. So yesterday, as I was driving back from um, my friend's place, my check engine light came on. Um, so I'm not like too worried. I know there's a lot of possibilities as to what could be wrong with it, like something as simple as the oxygen filter. Um, I was able to drive like 60 more miles on it, so I'm not super worried, but I am gonna take it to the mechanic now to see what the hell is up. Back at my old favorite place. Luckily, my assumption was sort of correct in that the check engine light being on wasn't because of a massive issue or anything. Um, however, the actual issue was with the EVAP purge valve canister. And as obscure of a car part as that sounds, um, I honest to God probably should have suspected that earlier. And here's why. <laughs> So a few weeks ago, I was coincidentally also leaving my friend's house in Western Mass when I reversed out of their front lawn and accidentally backed over some like pieces of rebar that were sticking out of the ground. Um, I could hear them as they were like striking the underside of the van, but nothing was immediately wrong. So I headed home, but then just a couple minutes into the drive, I got an alert on my dashboard to tighten my gas cap and no matter how tightly I closed it, the alert just stayed on. After some frantic Googling and unwarranted panicking, I learned about the EVAP system, which essentially stops fuel vapors from escaping your fuel system and entering the environment. After a few weeks, the gas cap alert actually just went away, and I figured I'd probably just knocked into some sensor, and it was fine. So this all probably happened like two months ago now, but the other day when I went to the mechanic to have them take a look at the check engine light code, there it was, the EVAP system. And my um, purge valve canister was cracked and had a leak and my solenoid was also failing and needed to be replaced. So I guess the rebar did some damage after all. Um, I really only have myself to blame and thankfully it was a relatively quick and easy fix. So I can't complain too much. And in the grand scheme of things, there's really nothing quite like the security of driving with no dashboard lights on. While I was there, I also had them replace my fan belt, which was starting to wear out and make this god awful noise that got worse whenever I accelerated. And they also replaced some of the tensioner pulleys that the fan belt itself sits on. Um, I figured I would just have them do it while I was there because above everything else, my main priority is keeping this vehicle in good working condition. I'm finding out that a big part of building a van like this is learning to be patient with all the delays, ones that are often due to circumstances totally out of my control. And as much as I want to feel like I'm making noticeable progress all the time, I know that the invisible stuff is important too. Every mechanical problem I get fixed, all the tools and materials I buy, and each question I Google is progress in itself. But for now, it's pretty nice to be able to just step back and admire my work so far. Thank you.